Shalom and welcome to another video at the Genesis 49ers page. Today's topic is going to be a goodie. It's going to be speaking about Japheth and how Japheth is a dark skinned race. It's a Negro race originally. And we're going to explain that through various sources. But before we go into the topic of today, I want to bring out two definitions. Um, the first one is eu-hemorism or eu humorism an interpretation of myths as traditional accounts of historical persons and events. That's one method we're going to use today because the farther you go back in time, the more mythological events get. Uh, a lot of ancient people would take real historic events and make make it into a mythos okay second definition apotheosis to grant to, to grant someone or other god status or an other god status deification to deify so it's basically the same thing so a lot of people would deify their ancestors i brought that out about the uh tribe the the mayans how they would deify that their ancestor zebulon Okay, because that's within their mythos. Uh, they have a, a guy named uh, Zebulon. Okay. But we're dealing with Japheth, which mainly is the Greece, Thracians, and different European original people. The aboriginals of those lands. Okay, the Medes, or northern Turkey. So, let's get right into it. Japheth, the Negroid race. Because... Again, they were originally a Negro race, and that's what I'm going to prove. Some people walk around saying they were white, they were white. According to what? Your interpretation? Can we validate these claims? We can validate that they were originally a Negro race. And the scholastic world agrees. First slide. Origin. Japhet, one of the three sons of Noah, mentioned last in order, but held by critics to have been the eldest, one of the eight persons preserved in the ark, and the progenitor to whom is ascribed the peopling of the northern portion of Asia Minor and perhaps Thrace. Most of the nations of Europe are usually deduced from Japheth, who is supposed to be identical with the Greek Japetus, the father of Prometheus. The only specific act of Japheth according to the Bible is one of the filial piety, piety to his father when drunken which obtained for him the prophecy, God shall enlarge Japheth, he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. Japheth seems to have been born a hundred years before the flood. The length of his life is not mentioned, but his brother Shem lived 502 years after the flood. Genesis 11, 11 which may be conjectured to have been the average period allotted to the sons of Noah, it is noticeable that the Greek mythology makes Japetus the ancestor of the human race. Nothing is known as to the lo locality inhabited Japheth after the flood, but genealogical reasons would favor the immediate vicinity of Mount Ararat. Okay, that's from Johnson's Universal Cyclopedia, Volume 4, page 749. To my right, I have a note. Japheth is reputed as the ancestor of the human race in Greek mythology which proves that the ancient people of Greece descended from Japetus, which is Japheth. So they, they have this in their mythos. And what we read, what we read earlier, those definitions, of what they would take historical events and, and make it mythological. You can find a lot of historical events within the mythos of the people. Okay? Let's keep going. Next slide. The locale of Japheth. Japheth, the son of Noah, had seven sons. They inhabited so that the beginning at the mountain of Taurus and Amenus, Amenus, they proceeded along Asia as far as the river Tanaeus and along Europe to Cadiz, which is, I think is in Spain, and settling themselves on the lands which they light upon, which none had inhabited before. They called the nation by their own names, and that's from the Antiquities of the Jews, uh, one, book 1 and verse 6, Josephus. Examples, because remember he said they called the nations by their own names. The Ionians, which is Yavan or Yavana, okay? 
Meshek, the Moshkoi, Madai, Medus, Tubal, the Timur, the Timuranoi. Okay, so you can see those names in the ancient peoples, you know, which gives validity to what the Bible teaches. Okay, these historical records give validity to the Bible. That's why that's why Paul said, in all things we can use uh to those that believe in God. I think it's Romans 8 28. I'm paraphrasing. Okay. So don't be afraid to go through the annals of history and do research. That's what we need. That's what we've been lacking. A lot of these camps and different outlets don't do research. They don't perform a good enough presentation to give an argument to the claims they're making. So that's why people like James White can come in and embarrass our community. We have to change that. But the next slide is a sidebar. Okay, dark. From the foregoing, we may assume that lighter types were certainly not infrequent in ancient Greece, but as the as a whole, the population was certainly dark complexion. I'm gonna read that again. But as a whole, the population was certainly dark complexion. That comes from the source Race and Civilization, page 109, by Frederick Odo Hertz. He said that were like the title. Javan is a Negroid race. The ancient Greeks was a Javan, Javana, a Javan, a Javana kingdom. They were regarded as a Negroid race. That's documented with source material, not interpretation. That's why you have to pull sources. You can't just rely on your interpretation. Your mind is fallible, okay? You make mistakes. We have to go what the ancestors recorded when they were there and they were around. What they drew on the frescoes count. But in a Negro's mind, nothing counts but his interpretation. We got to get away from that thinking that is poisonous to our community and will not excel spiritually in that manner. Next slide. In the art, you can see this as well. It says the island of Crete has yielded the first blacks portrayed in art beyond Africa. Among the earliest of these is a profile with a very thick, with very thick lips and snub nose carved in a shell found in southern Crete, dating from the early second millennium BC. A procession of cold black warriors appear in the fresco from Knossos uh, around 1550 to 1500 BC. And another fresco of approximately the same period from the island of Thera carries the profile of a black whose Negroid traits are somewhat reduced, wavy hair, rather thick lips, and medium broad nose. That's page 14 of Before Color Prejudice by Frank M. Snowden. So that's more proof they were originally a Negroid people. Period. The island of Creek. The scriptures tell you that they will there will be the Gentiles of the Isles, the nation of the islands. But we claim we, we follow the scriptures. Okay. Now, this is from the Society for Promoting Christian Knowledge God. Knowledge of God, page 44. And I'm gonna start uh at, at it says at Palaskio of the men. Of the women were markedly long-headed. Only eight to fifty-five of the men in five eighty-seven, the women were markedly short or broad-headed. These figures suggest that the Minoans belong to the dark-skinned, long-headed Mediterranean race. Okay, and the small, average stature, five foot to five inches. So we can see we're pulling sources that they are dark-skinned. Okay, it says in the small, average stature, five foot five inches, which Dr. Duckworth infers from their bones leads to the same conclusion the cranial measure measurements which have been taken of Greeks of classical times have given practically the same results. So the Greeks, the Cretans, they all were dark skinned, the Minoans dark skinned people. These are Japhetic children. These are Japhetic people. Understand that. On the other hand, these do not seem to include any specimen from classical age in Crete. And Dr. Duckworth's investigation from a modern inhabitants of the same part of the island show that so far, agreeing with, with their Minoan predecessors, they are uh, brachiophallic and have an average height of five foot seven inches. 
the type which they does suggest is one familiar in the Balkans and the Antolian Plateau. This race may have reached Crete since classical times, but we cannot exclude the possibility of a mixture of races there in Minoan times when we find Mr. Evans reminded of the same dark skin but broad headed Balkan race by the portrait of the cupbearer because they were examining the art, the frescoes, the, the, the vases and the cups and, and so on and so forth, the coins. You can see dark skinned people on there. You can't deny the art. Reading on. The fact indeed that Dr. Duckworth investigation only covered a period much earlier than the fresco suggests that we must open up some middle Minoan three and late Minoan ossuaries before before the whole problem let's skip some the whole problem indeed that we have to face is one of intrusive elements when they whence they came and what particular contribu contribution they made to the general stock grant with those ethnologists that practically the whole basin of the Mediterranean was inhabited in Neolithic times by a dark skinned long race that this race possesses extraordinary persistence and in spite of the constant invasions and conquests remains the basis of the present population in Spain, Italy, Greece, and Egypt. That is the most gifted race in the world and that the artistic impulse wherever we find, find it in the area which it inhabits has also been due to it. Grant all this, we are a little nearer solving what is really interesting part of the question of what times and under what influences and various branches develop their special characteristics and their widely different languages. Now, it says that practically the whole basin of the Mediterranean was inhabited in Neolithic times by dark skinned, long, a long headed race. What does Neolithic mean? It means anything before 3300 BC, meaning the original inhabitants of these lands Greece, uh, Italy, Thrace, okay, Athens, Crete, all these places, the Isles of the Aegean Sea, all these places were inhabited. In Neolithic times, meaning a long time ago, the first ones, and what? What, what were they? What were they skin? Dark skin people. They were Negroid. They were not Caucasian. They would, uh, in, a, in a scholastic term, they weren't Nordic types. <laughs> so, where are you getting this information from? You're getting this from interpretation. That's where you're getting it from. It goes back to that scientific racism. Because the word Japheth means beautiful. And they equate beautifulness with fair. And what do they equate fairness with? White skin. Fair does not mean white skin. It means beautiful. So they try to correlate that. But you got to do real research. You have to go deeper, man. A lot of y'all brothers, y'all stuck in this paradigm of just, you go to a precept and then you make your own interpretation you think that overrides any other knowledge that overrides what our ancestors wrote now that overrides arts frescoes paintings that overrides everything in your mind that is cancerous and we cannot have that in our community we must teach people we must edify and build them up to a level okay so they will not be ignorant so they can actually have an answer Instead of, you know, fumbling all, all over the place, making up stuff as you go. Nonetheless, let's continue on. Let's talk about the Medes. We all know the Medes come from Madai, which is the son of Japheth, of the, of the posterity of Japheth, right? Now, this is from the Black Terror, White Soldiers, uh, Islam, Fascism, and New Age by David Livingstone, right? It says the Scythians were related to a legend popular among many of the Jews who equated with them the lost tribes of Israel. According to the Bible, the Israelites became lost after the northern kingdom of Israel was conquered by the Assyrians who dispersed them among the Medes who lived in Iran in, a, in an area known as Media. The Medes, according to the Greek mythology, were descended from Media, the Cochin, which from the story of Jason and the Argonauts, according to legend, Media, Media Media later married Agius of Athens, after whom the Aegean Sea is named. The Medes were descended from their son, Medus of Cochis. So the Medes and the Cochians are two of the same, or one of the same. According to a description by Herodotus, a Greek historian in the 5th century BC, known as the father of history, the Cochians who dwelt in the land located along the western slope of the Caucasus Mountains near the Black Sea in what is now the state of Georgia were 
were black and probably Jewish. Like, just focus on the part where it says were black. Like the Jews of the Palestine, whom he referred to as Phoenicians, Herodotus also regarded the people of coaches as derived from the Egyptian colony. Why? Because of their dark and woolly, dark skin and woolly hair. He not only pointed to the Cochins, black skin and woolly hair as evidence, but also their oral traditions, language, methods of weaving, and practice of circumcision. St. Jerome, writing during the 4th century AD, called the Cochins the second Ethiopia. Why? Because they were dark skinned. Who are these people? They are the Medes. They come from Japhet. What are we proving? That Japhet was originally a dark skinned people. Not the Caucasians. They were not Caucasians. Okay, understand that. It says, 200 years later, Sophronius, Patri Patriarch of Jerusalem, described an Ethiopian presence in the same region. Diodorus of, of Sicily, a historian of the first century BC in the universal history, stated, They say also that those who set forth with Danius, Dan, Traba, Dan, likewise from Egypt, settled with what is practically the oldest city of Greece, Argos, and that the nations of the Kochi and Pontus and that of the Jews, which lies between Arabia and Syria, were founded as colonies by certain immigrants from their country, i.e. Egypt. And this is the reason why it's a long-established inst institution among these people. Because why? These people are dark. All these people are dark-skinned. All these people are dark-skinned. All of them are dark-skinned. Everybody he named on there, dark-skinned. The original inhabitants were dark-skinned. Japheth is a Negroid race. They were initially a Negroid race. Now, you probably ask, well, what happened? We already know what happens. We're going to get to it later. Next slide. The deities. Let's deal with the deities. Negroes, as was said, were deified as gods in, in Greek mythology. The chief title of Zeus, greatest of all, was Ethiops. That is black. Other black Venuses were melanins, from which is derived melanin, or the pigment in Negro skin. I don't have the source down there, but the source is J.A. Rogers, Nature Knows No Color Line. J.A. Rogers, matter of fact, let me go ahead and just insert it. J.A. Rogers, Nature Knows No Color Line. by J.A. Rogers and what he's bringing out in his book is that what Negroes are said to deified as gods in Greek mythology the chief title of Zeus greatest of all was Ethiops that is black that's what that was Zeus title was black why because he was Negroid right the first slide I gave you guys to the right, that's Zeus. Notice the woolly hair, the knotted up hair, the, the, the woolly, tightly curled hair. He's Negroid. The chief god of the gods of, of Greece is depicted as a Negro. Understand that. Why? Because you, as a people, the people that made these gods they make them in their image. And that's what I'm going to get to in the next next few slides. They make it in their own image. They make the gods look like them. Okay? It says, that is the other black Venuses were melanins, from which derive melanin, or the pigment in Negro skin. <laughs> to the right, you see Negro Circus offering cup to Odysseus, where you get the, the Odyssey story, the hero of the Odyssey story. He's black. He's dark-skinned. Cadmus versus, versus the dragon, also coming from the, uh, the Odyssey story. All black people. The original inhabitants, Greeks, which is Juan, Minoans, and stuff like that, stuff of that nature, are dark skinned people originally. The Judgment of Paris. To the left, you have the goddess Hera. The queen of the gods. What color is she? Black. To the right, to the, in the middle, the goddess Aphrodite's. 
What color is she? Black. Next one. It says, uh, their mythology says that Phaeton, son of Helios, the sun god, induced his father to let him drive the chariot of the sun one day. And his lack of skill drove it to near certain lands and burnt black with intense heat the people there. Now, a third century poet tried to say this is how the Ethiopians got black. But the original doesn't say that it went over Ethiopia. Okay? That's even more so as it says the whole earth. Because that shows you that the Greeks, the Grecians thought everybody was black at one point in time. And they, this is how they explained it. Oh, we all got burnt by the sun. That's from Nature's No No Color Line, page one by J. Rogers. And you see the Negro coin in Greece, 450 B.C. era. You can't make this stuff up. Next slide. The poets and myth makers, makers yielded to the common temptation of men. They made their gods in their own image. Quote from Xenophanes, 5th century. Source, the myth of the state. Page 55 by Ernest Cassirer. And to the right, you see Negro and Nike, which is a Greek god, depicted as a what? A Negro. So we had Zeus depicted as a Negro. Okay? We had um, Hera and Aphrodite depicted as Negroes. Now we got Nike depicted as a Negro. The people make gods after their own images. How they look, how the polity looks, how the laity looks. That's how they make their gods. Why don't we see the original gods looking like Caucasian? The original gods looked of the Greek, the, the, the Greek uh, mythos look like Negroes. That's a reflection of the people. Let's go to the Medes. Look, depict, we, we have art depicted Negroid Japhites. The Medes. Look at the Medes soldiers. Look at that knotted hair. Look at that Negroid textured hair. This is how they would have depicted. They would have like knots. Look at that. These are Negroid people. This is the uh, at the at the palace in Iran. Look at this. Dark skinned soldiers. And we know the Medes and the Persians ruled at this time. So there's no confusion, man. The confusion comes with your own interpretation. That's where the confusion comes. Period. So the next slide. This was found in Thrace, the Fiali or the Fiali, I don't know how to say that, but it means dish, concentric rows of Negroes. These are all Negroes. What is this doing in Thrace? And why is it gold? You mint things in gold that you want to honor. Why is this gold? These are all Negroid faces found in Thrace. The Chigi vase found in an Etruscan tomb at Monte Aguzzo. This is in Italy. It is the earliest representation of the hoplite phalanx formation. Around 650 BC. All black warriors. Why? Because the original people of Japheth, the original inhabitants of Europe, the Northern Asia Minor, Thrace, Athens, Greece, Italy, Spain were dark Negroid people. This is what happened. They mix with Esau. Miscegenation with Esau. And we, we check out my video I did prior about who is Esau. I brought the facts and the information about that about the different legends and his, historical documents that prove they did that. But Esau is a Middle Eastern people and Japheth were the European people. They were the people that lived in the European locales. Well, you can clearly see what happened. Last slide, but certainly not the least, the rise of Macedonia. We have seen that Greece was never a unified nation. There was even dispute throughout the history of the Greeks as a people. 
as to exactly who were entitled to be styled Greeks. This was disputed. This was disputed. Why? Because you had a people that were not of the original or aboriginal people like today the, with the Native Indians. I use them as a perfect example. You have people claiming to be Native Indians that signed the Dawes Rolls and you have the original descendants of the Native Indians arguing back and forth having disputes with these Caucasian people trying to claim their legacy and their history. The same thing happened back in those days. What does the Bible tell you in Ecclesiastes? There's nothing new under the sun. The same thing happened with those Greeks. So I'm going to read again. There was even dispute throughout the history of the Greeks as a people as to exactly who were entitled to be styled Greeks. In particular, the question arose in reference to the Macedonians. Who are who? They are Edomites. They come from the Timidai. The Timidai is who? The people of Timon. Who is Timon? The descendant of Esau. Y'all got to learn to know what y'all are speaking about. Y'all need to know the information before you open your mouths. So we can be better represented as a people. But anywho, in, a particular, in particular, the question arose in reference to the Macedonians when they came to power under the leadership of King Philip, father of Alexander the Great. The Macedonians spoke a dialect of the Greek language. And Philip ardently contended that he and his people were entitled to be considered as true Greeks. He had to contend to be, notif to, to be noticed as Greeks. Okay, in the public eye. Why? Because they weren't Greeks. They weren't the original people. Simple. The claim was hotly contested. So long as the people of Greece, in the narrow sense, had the power to hold out against the man whom they regarded as a usurper. He looked at Philip II as a usurper, someone trying to take control of their lands. But in the end, claim Philip received official recognition. And his subjug subjugation of Greece was not regarded as the conquest of a foreigner, but merely as established the, the hegemony of one Greek state over others. Because he eventually killed everybody, he killed the people and made them come under his control. <laughs> so now you're going to recognize me as Greeks after I, I killed you. But before it was hotly contested with the original inhabitants of Greece. It says, but merely as establishing a he hegemony, meaning the ruling class of one Greek state over the others. Macedonia and now taking the leadership, which had been held in turn by the Athens, Sparta, and Thebes. In the broadest view, this, was, this way of regarding the Macedonians as really Greeks was perhaps not illogical. The question is the exact origin of the Hellen Hellenes is still in much doubt. But the more the matter is investigated, the more certain it is it becomes that the wonderful people was a mixed race. Throughout history everywhere, why? Because you had Edom, like I covered in my last video. Esau was mixing with, with the Hittites. He was mixing with, with the Etruscans, okay, with the people of Crete, okay. And then he eventually came during the, the, the period of the Greeks and tried to take over all these lands, okay. Not tried, he did. Uh, but let me, let me read on. The, exact, the question of the exact origin of the Hellenes is still much... It's still much in doubt, but the more the matter investigate, the more certain it becomes that the wonderful people was a mixed race. Throughout history everywhere, the ethnologist points out that it is the mixed race which develops the greatest potentialities. In the case of the Greeks, there's no exception to the rule. One speaks of the Greeks as Aryans, and therefore naturally associate them with the Persians and Indians on, on the one hand and the Germanic races on the other. Yet in point of fact, it is probably only in relation to their speech that any such close affinity exists. If the theory of the Mediterranean race with, with its Central African origin be true, why? Because of their dark skin and woolly hair. Then the Greeks considered ethno eth ethnologically were much more closely associated with the so-called Hermetic Egyptians and the so-called Semitic Hebrews. Babylonians, Assyrians, and Phoenicians than they were with the so-called Aryan race. Why? Because they were Negroid. The original people of Greece, the Jawan, the Jawana Kingdom, the Jawana Kingdom was Negroid. Period. All discussion of this exact point is still somewhat problematical, but it's quite clear to the most casual physical inspection that the Greek is of a physical type much more closely akin to the dark skin and dark 
eye, Mediterranean racist in to the fair skinned, blue eyed, Indo Germanic tribe. Those are Edomites. He's saying they're not the Edomites. They're not Idomians. They're not of Esau. They are from Japhet, which is a dark Negroid race. Throughout this whole presentation, I have been validating that point. No vague interpretations. No, oh, brother, this scripture says, no. A brother going to try to tell me, or, or, or I've seen on the video, let me put it like that, that because Esau was blessed with the sword, and since the flag of a, Saudi Arabia has a sword on it, then that means that, no, that doesn't work. That's a vague interpretation. That's very silly. That's unintelligible. You can't make claims like that. You don't, you're not using anything to back up what you're saying. This is scholarship. Okay? Understand that. But let me read it again. That the Greek is of a physical type much more closely acting to the dark-skinned and dark-eyed Mediterranean races than to the fair-skinned, blue-eyed Indo-Germanic tribes. Yet the language of the Greeks is unequivocally of the Indo-Germanic family. Quite possibly the explanation of this anomaly may be found in a theory of prehistoric invasion of Greece by Germanic race. And then that's the end of it. But that's from Greece to Roman Conquest by Henry S. William, page 208. That's when it completely got dominated by the Macedonians, which Alexander came from. And that's when they usurped and took the, the name of the Greeks. Just gave it to you. But the original inhabitants were black. Let me let me go back up there and read that again. Maybe, maybe this video is dragging on too long and we, we forgot the initial point. Let me go back here. From the foregoing, we may assume that lighter types were certainly not infrequent in ancient Greece. But as the whole, the population was certainly dark complexioned. Source, Race and Civilization, page 109 by Frederick Otto Hertz. Okay? What's the conclusion? Japheth was originally a black, dark, Negro race. Okay? End of discussion. Scholarship over BS. So no more vague descriptions. Genesis 49ers. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. More presentations full of sources that you can. So the, the, the viewer can go home and read this information themselves. You can write this stuff down. Take notes. Record it. Do what you need to do. Share this video throughout the various social media sites, Facebook, Twitter, and be on the lookout for more videos like this. I say shalom to all my brethren, uh, brothers that might have different perspectives. I say shalom to you as well. And with that, Genesis 49ers signing out.